you the rest of my life will be the best of my life. All right, you can be seated. I'm going to get you to say that as much as I can. Uh, and I'm not saying life's going to be perfect. I know some of you are thinking, boy, this guy just thinks life's just great. There's never any problems. Look, we all have problems. The Bible even tells us that we're going to. It promises us in John 16, verse 33, in the world you will have trials, tribulation, distress, frustration. Awesome. Just came to encourage you a little bit. Not looking good, people. No, no. How many have ever had some trials and tribulations? How many, have ever, how many have ever been on an airplane that hit turbulence? Things got a little bumpy, you know. What what'd you do when the airplane hit turbulence? Prayed, someone prayed, held on, buckled up. Did, it, did anybody get off the plane right then? You're like, I don't like turbulence, I'm out. No, you can't get off the plane. You hold on, you buckle up, you can't just quit. How many have ever hit some turbulence in life? Things got a little bumpy in life, what do you do? Same thing, pray, hold on, buckle up. You can't quit. Life's too tough. I just, I just quit. You got to you, hold on. How many have ever been on an airplane to hit turbulence and you're still here? We made it. We made it. Same thing in life. You're going to go through some things, but I love what the rest of that verse says, but be of good cheer. Look, be of good cheer. Jesus said, I've already overcome the world. I've deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. I don't know about you, but that sounds like pretty good news right there. I, I was on a plane the other day, and, and uh, a lady got on. She sat down next to me, and I could tell she's a little nervous. We talked for a few minutes. She'd never flown before. And, uh, and so she's like, I'm just nervous. And I'm like, don't worry. You know, I'm on the plane. It's going to be fine. So we talked for a few minutes. The plane took off, and I don't know about you, but I can't stay awake on the plane. When the plane takes off, I fall asleep. And, and so it took off. I was sound asleep. It, we'd been in the air probably 20 minutes. We hit some turbulence. That plane started shaking a little bit. And, I, and all of a sudden, I felt her start hitting my leg. She's like, hey, hey, wake up. I'm like, huh, huh. She's like, do something. I was like, what do you, what do you want me to do? She, Didn't you say you were like a preacher? I said, I'm like a preacher. I'm not like a pilot, you know. She's like, well, just do something religious. So I got up and took an offering. I thought that'd be. In the world, you're going to have some trials, but be of good cheer. I'm glad to know God is for you and not against you. Amen? God has good things in store for you. So good to be back at Calgary Life Church. How many love your church? How many thankful for this amazing church? Man, with pastors and leaders like you have, how could you not love your church? How many are thankful for your pastors? How many are thankful for Pastor Anthony, Pastor Madeline, their whole family? Just amazing, amazing people. Great friends for many years, and I'm just always honored. I get so encouraged to be around them, and you just got someone who loves you, wants the best for you. They, they, they believe in you, and just hearing them talk about you. And, and thank you. For, for being willing to share him with the world, share them with the world, with the gifts and the things that are on their life. When you see the impact, we get to see the pictures of what's happening around the world. And, and, and so on behalf of a whole lot of people, thank you for, for allowing them, for praying for them, for investing in, in, in the world. And uh, what, an amazing, what an amazing church you get to be a part of. Now, don't expect me to preach as good as him, though. Uh, he's good, man. Just getting up here, I'm just like, man, I wish I, wish I had that kind of, I feel like I preach like that. But then my wife said, no, you just sat there. I'm like, but I felt like I was like, she's like, nope, you didn't. But inside, I'm just, no, I'm really preaching good inside. And, and so outside is just going to be what I can, you know. You got to be you. I can't be him. I got to be me. Me is taller than him, so I got to just be me. And, and so, but anyway, anyway, you just, you just be, you just be, you just be you. How many, how many know life is a gift, yeah, and, and how many know gifts are meant to be enjoyed? Could you imagine picking out a gift for somebody and you found just the perfect gift? You're like, oh, they're going to love this. I can't wait to give it to them. You give it to them like, oh, I got this just for you. And they said, oh, thanks, and just set it on the table. You're like, no, 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 open that. I got it for you. Oh, I'll get to it later. And that's kind of how God feels when you don't open the gift he gave you life. Some of you are sitting there, you, oh, well, I'm going to try to get through it. Oh, maybe I'll enjoy it a little bit later. Life was meant to be enjoyed. Life was meant to be unwrapped. I can't think of anything worse than getting a gift. And what I love is God picked out the gift just for you. God didn't go to Costco. Do you all have Costco here? 
you know, like by life in bulk, just give us all the same thing. Everybody just alike. No, someone the other day said, Dave, you and me, man, we are just alike. I said, if me and you are just alike, one of us is unnecessary. And I'm going to say it's you. No, no, none of us are alike. I can't be you. You can't be me. We just got to unwrap your gift. I love gifts. Love giving gifts. Gave my mother-in-law a gift. A couple Christmases ago, I gave her a, I got her a cemetery plot for Christmas. And I was, (laughs) my mother-in-law. I didn't get her anything last year. She was mad at me. You didn't give me anything for Christmas this year. I'm like, you didn't even use what I got you. Just say, you know, when you get someone a gift, you want them. So, so here's this gift called life. How do we, how do we unwrap it? We, we declare the rest of our life will be the best of our life. But in my next few minutes I have with you, I want to talk about this. How to make the rest of your year the best of your year. Now, I mean, we can look at our life. How do you make the rest of your life the best of your life? Well, you start with making the rest of your year the best of your year. How do you make the rest of your year the best of your year? Well, start with making the rest of this week the best of this week. How about the rest of this day being the best of this day? What could I do today that would make tomorrow different? If you go into tomorrow with the same information you have today, tomorrow will be just like today. How many have got some area of your life you'd like to be doing better than you're doing right now? Let me see your hand. Let me see here. Okay, that's just about all of us. We've got some area of our life. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it just means there's something you don't know. What you don't know, they say what you don't know can hurt you. Well, that's, that's true. And so, uh, so I want to look at that just for a few minutes today, how to make the rest of our year the best of our year. If you're taking notes, got your phone, just I'm gonna write these. I'm going to give you like three things. So I want you just to write those three things down. If, you, if you're not taking notes, just go ahead and, and write these three things down. I think it'll help you if, you if you do. Oh, let me ask you this question. Do dogs like bones? Yeah, everyone's like, oh, yeah, dogs like bones. I, my dog likes bones. I, well, actually, I think my dog actually likes steak. But I think she settles for bones. And I think a lot of times in life, we settle for less than what God really has for us. I, I just believe God is way more for you than you could ever even imagine. And, and so sometimes we settle. So we let the devil feed us baloney when God is serving T-bone steak. God has so much more for us. And like I said, I'm not saying life's going to be perfect. In the world, you're going to have some trials and tribulations, and, but you got to be of good cheer because we already know in the end we're, we win. So we're not hoping that we get a victory. We already are victorious, so we're starting from a place of victory. And so when we, we begin to understand that, we see and we know that God is for us. The Bible says in John uh, chapter 10, how many believe the Bible, by the way? Let me start with that. Okay, a little over half of you. Wouldn't you hate to find out it wasn't true? That'd be horrible. You ever thought about that? Like, what if God didn't really write all this stuff? A lot of stuff in there. It's a big book. Anybody ever wondered that? I mean, seriously, I grew up in church my whole life. My dad's a preacher. My grandfather's a preacher. I've wondered, I mean, did God write all of this stuff? Anybody ever wondered? Come on, be honest. Okay, thank you. You won't go to hell. It's fine. You can be honest. Thank you. If God didn't do it, though, then you got to think who did it. So then you got to start thinking of people you know, try to narrow it down. If God didn't do it, maybe my Uncle Tony did it. I don't know. He don't do a whole lot. Then I found that scripture, if you don't work, you don't eat. I'm like, nope, Uncle Tony didn't write that. I can tell you. If you started thinking of people you know, you could narrow it down, right? You know your kids didn't write it. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Maybe my wife wrote it. Submit to your... Nope. Uh, How many, be honest, how many of you to wrote the Bible, how many could think of like three things you would not have put in there? Well, there have been eight commandments. (laughs) Tithing would have been lower. 5%. 5%. No. Here, here's what I know. No human being could have ever wrote a standard this high. So if God said it, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. And, and, and I found he said here in John 10, 10, that the thief comes 
to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the enemy, the devil. He comes to, to kill your dreams, uh, steal your finances, steal your joy, to destroy your marriage. That's what he comes to do. That's his job is to mess stuff up for you. But Jesus said, that's not my job. I came that you might have life. There's that gift and that you might have it more abundantly an abundant life. Uh, uh, And and Jesus tells us that's what what he came to do. And I've read that verse a million times. You've probably heard it a million times. But the other day, there's a word that jumped out at me. I never, I mean, I've already just kind of jumped over it. He came to I'm going to have life more abundantly. And I stopped on that word more, more. I mean, it'd be good just to be abundant, but he wants me to be more abundant. I mean, like he said, I want you to be not just a conqueror, but he said, you are more than conquers. He, he, not just he doesn't want to increase you, but he wants to increase you. Uh, Psalm says he wants to increase you more and more, you and your children. I started finding all the places in the Bible where he said the word more. He wanted more. Ephesians 3.20, that he, he'll give you more, do super abundantly, more than you could ever even think or imagine. God is for us. God has great things. So, so if I want more, how many would like to have more Love in your home, more love in your home. Uh, how many like to have more joy in your mind, in your heart, more peace in your mind? How many like to have more money in the bank? Come on, be honest. How many like to be able to give more and help more people? Yeah. How many like to see more people get saved here at Calgary Life Church? How many like to see more people get baptized? I mean, look at all of us. We want more. There's this desire for more is not a wrong desire. It's not an evil desire. Matter of fact, the first command God gave humans was be fruitful and multiply. Multiply means more, means increase. So the very first God thing God said, I want more of his anointing on my life. I want more of his presence. I want more of his, his wisdom and his favor. And, and so I started looking at all this and, and I'm like, where's some areas where we need more. Luke chapter 2, verse 52, uh, it says, Jesus increased, Jesus got more wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. So if Jesus needed more wisdom, I'm thinking, I probably need to get a little smarter. Now, I ask how many would like to be doing better than you're doing right now. Most of you lifted your hand. I said, it just means there's something you don't know. So I'd say the first thing you need if you want to make the rest of your year different than the first part of your year, because if you want tomorrow to be different than today, you've got to learn something today that will make tomorrow different. I think the first thing you need to do if you want to make the rest of your year the best year is you got to know more. you got to, you got to know more. The Bible says, Proverbs 1, verse 5, that a wise person will increase in learning. So the Bible says if you're smart, you want to keep getting smarter. It means, it means you want to you learn something. Because I really think, that, well, the whole book of Proverbs talks to us all about the advantages and the importance of wisdom. So I think the first most important thing you can do is, is learn more. I try to learn something every day. If tomorrow's going to be different than today, what am I going to learn today that's going to make tomorrow different? And sometimes I learn big things. Sometimes I learn little things, you know. I learned the other day if you, if you um, a guy in our, our church in Detroit, his company makes all the seat belts and airbags for the Ford F-150s. So that's pretty cool. And I'm not, so I didn't know a lot about airbags, never really thought about it much. And he's explained to me how much, like if an airbag deploys, cost $500 to put an airbag back. And I was like, well, I never knew that. And, and he's like, you know, and that's why the passenger side, you know, if no one's with you, you don't want that airbag to deploy because you got, it costs $500. And so they can turn off the passenger side. And he's telling me all this. And I was like, wow, that's good. That gave me something I never thought about because that's 500 bucks. Like, so then I had to start thinking like, who's riding with me? Right. It's 500 bucks. Should I turn it off? Uh, I don't know. And and so I I had a little accident the other day. I called home and said, honey, don't worry. I'm fine. My airbag deployed. Sorry about your mom. Uh, uh, There's another bad mother-in-law joke. I should stop mother-in-law jokes. I love my mother-in-law. Remember that whole thing when Peter denied Jesus? Remember that whole thing? That, that, like three times he denies Jesus. You ever wondered why he would do that? I mean, you're with Jesus. Like, I don't know him, right? I don't know if this is why, but I did notice a few verses before that whole thing happened was where, Pete, where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. <laughs> I don't know if that made him mad. I don't know if it upset him. I don't know what happened there. I'm just saying that's just, it's in the Bible. But I'm, oh, there's always something to learn, right? There's always something to, to learn. So if I want tomorrow to be different than today, 
I, I learned, I like to go back and sign books. I got a little resource I'll tell you about for a few of you. There are a few of you like to invest in yourself. And and the Bible says wisdom is more valuable than silver, more profitable than gold. By the way, if you like to learn something every day, we put together a daily video. It's called The Daily with Dr. Dave. And I take about three minutes every day just to give some encouragement and, and a little video. And if, if you're interested in that, it's absolutely free. Uh, they'll put something up on, on the screen. I'm just thinking of it. And uh, and if, if you want to, if you want to get it, you can just do the QR code, and, uh, and, and we, every morning when you wake up, I'll be at your house. Be a little weird, but I'll be there, and uh, it'll be a little encouragement for you, and uh, it's absolutely free, so you can learn something. I'm going to help you learn something every day, because if you want tomorrow to be different, but I like to go back and sign books and, and things like that, so I'm meeting, well, that's another thing I learned. I learned there's all kind of new ways to spell names. There's new ways. Yeah, like I, there's like Cheryl could be spelled. Is that Cheryl with an S or Cheryl with a C, you know? Amy. There's like five ways to spell Amy. Yeah, there was a, there was a, a new girl at, the, at Starbucks the other day, and I was just kidding with her. She had a little badge on, said trainee. I was like, that's funny. You know, your mom named you trainee, you know? And she looked at me. She said, it's Trené. <laughs> I didn't know. So there's always something to learn. So if you want tomorrow to be different than today, learn something new today. I try to learn something every day. Every day. And people are trying to get a lot of things in life. But the Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4, verse 7, that wisdom is the most important thing you can get. Really, the only problem you'll ever have in life is a wisdom problem. You don't have marriage problems. You have wisdom problems. You don't have health problems. A lot of times, you just have some wisdom problems. Yeah, you don't have financial problems. It's just wisdom problems. You just didn't know. There's something you don't know that's hindering you from, from having everything, from going to that next level. It starts with some next level thinking, some wisdom. So you got you to gotta know, know more. How many married people are in here? Married people. Yeah. Um, how many single people? Any single people? Okay, got some married people, some single people. Uh, and, 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 and wherever you're at, enjoy the season. It's a, it's a season, and make the most of it. Enjoy. There's a purpose for every season. But it's funny because you see uh, 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 single people sitting, looking across the aisle, and married couples going, oh, I wish I was married. I'd have someone to share my life with. My life would be complete if I just had someone to. And, and then, you, you know, you see married couples looking across the aisle at single people. They're going, oh. Freedom, 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 you know. So whatever season you're in, you know, it's like you see the couple with no kids are looking at the people. Oh, look at the children. If we had children, our family would be complete. Everything would be wonderful if we just had some kids. And then you look at the woman with five kids. You don't see ecstasy on her face, right? It's just so just enjoy you. You just enjoy your, your season. But there's, there's wisdom for, for marriages. There's wisdom for, for single people. There, there's everything you need. Everything. That's what I love about the Bible. Everything you need's in there. Proverbs 3, verse 1 says, uh, 13, I'm sorry, Proverbs 3, verse 13, happy is the man who finds wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom, the man who gets understanding, drawing it forth from God's word and life's experiences. The word of God is full of of wisdom principles. There's a big difference between the person of Jesus, which gets us to heaven, and the principles of Jesus, which help us on the earth. And there's ungodly people who will use godly principles and, and achieve ungodly success, while a lot of times we don't know the principles, and we're, we're struggling. And, and it says it's more valuable than silver. It's more profitable than gold. Skillful and godly wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing you could wish for would compare to the value of wisdom. The more wisdom you have, the less miracles you'll need. A lot of people are waiting for miracles. Man, I just need a miracle. I just need a miracle. When if you had some wisdom, and I'm not saying I don't believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I could use a couple miracles right now. But how many have ever made this statement? If I knew back then what I know now, Anybody ever made that statement before? Man, if I'd have known back then, I'd have made different decisions, which would have ended me up in a different place. Now I'm here needing a miracle because I didn't know what I needed to know. That's why the Bible says, hey, whatever you do, wisdom will, will promote you. Wisdom will protect you. It goes through all, the, the, how, all these benefits of wisdom in your life. Wisdom protects you. How does wisdom protect you? That's simple. Uh, how many drove a car? You, drove, you came in a car to church today. Okay, how many locked your car in the parking lot? Okay, look for who did. No kidding. Why'd you lock your car? Don't you trust God? 
Of course you trust God. You just don't trust the people that might get in your car. So God gives you wisdom to say, hey, lock your car. It protects it, right? And so understanding the value of wisdom makes all the difference in the world. So the number one first thing, you want to make the rest of your year the best year, get wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding. I invest whatever I can. The Bible told me it's, it's valuable. I've gone to, I've flown across the world to go to seminars, to go to conferences, to invest in programs, whatever I can do to get information. You go to my, go to my office, I got 4,000 books. Why? There's too much stuff I don't know. And if the difference between where I am and where I want to be is just what I know, I want to find out what I don't know because you don't know sometimes what you don't know until you learn something new. I remember going to a meeting with a guy named Peter J. Daniels. Anybody ever heard of Peter J. Daniels? Wealthy businessman, very successful businessman. He knows something I don't know. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it means there's something you don't know. So he knows something I don't know. I go to his seminar. He's teaching. Man, it's, it's so good. I'm writing as fast as I can. Oh, that's good. Oh, I can use that. That's, that's good. And, and, and then he says, uh, he says, by the way, I've got some books and CDs and things. And he, he told us about all the stuff he had. So as soon as it was over, I ran back. I said, I want everything this guy's got. They said, you want everything? I said, everything. He knows something I don't know. I'm going to find out what it is. They, 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 my friend was with me. He said, you're going to buy everything? I said, Every, he, they added it up. They said, if you buy everything here on the table, it's $1,600. And, uh, well, at first I didn't know he knew that much stuff. Uh, that was a little more than I was expecting. And I said, I, my friend said, are you going to get it? I said, I think I am. He said, do you think it's worth it? I said, you know what? I think I'm worth it. You see, I, I go to my house, I buy books. Why? Because I think I can't go to the bookstore, Barnes and Noble, whatever. I can't go without, without spending two or 300 bucks. There's too much stuff I don't know. If the difference between where I am and where I want to be, plus the Bible told me how valuable it is, $1,600 is a lot cheaper than gold and silver and rubies and all that stuff that the Bible said. So I bought it all. Again, you, 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 do you think you're worth it, right? It's how you see yourself. A lot of times just how you see yourself. Three ways you can see yourself. Uh, last time I was here, I talked about this a little bit. If, 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 if you see yourself, you can see yourself the way other people see you, which may be good, may not be good. I learned a long time ago, what other people think about you is really none of your business. So don't go through your whole life worrying about what everyone else thinks about you all the time. The, 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 the second way, Eleanor Roosevelt said this. She said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So quit going through your whole life worrying about everybody else. The second way to see yourself is how you see yourself, right? It's called confidence, self-confidence. We all want to well, want good self-esteem, but, you know, things happen to us. Things, people say things to us, do things to us that affect our self-esteem, right? I mean, I can think of, we can probably all think of something that happened or someone said something that if we held on to it affected our, our self-esteem. I mean, I think back to high school one time, a girl broke up with me. She's come breaking up with you. You got low self-esteem. I was like, great, that. That helped. <laughs> Another time in high school, this girl called me. She said, hey, come over to my house. Nobody's home. I went over there. There was nobody home. <laughs> no, I just kept knocking. Nothing. That's hurtful. That's damaging to your self-esteem, right? And, and so things happen. We go through things in, in life. But, but then other things happen that help you. Like last night, I got to the hotel, and I got on the elevator. This lady looked at me. She goes, you look just like my third husband. I was like, I don't know how y'all do it in Canada. That's a lot, it seems like. I said, how many times have you been married? And she said, twice. So I, I'm, just, I, I'm just saying, right? So... The third way to see yourself, third way to see yourself is to see yourself the way God sees you. And get a, if you got a picture of yourself the way God sees you, the creator, the one who created you, it's like the way an artist looks at its masterpiece. I mean, God is looking at you. And, and when you begin to see that, you walk different, you think different. There's, a, there's not a confidence, but it goes beyond that. There's a Godfidence of not just knowing who you are, but knowing whose you are. And when you begin to see that, it changes the way you see everything. And, and so, so whatever you do, get wisdom. I, I got all that stuff because there's, there's just too much stuff I didn't know. And I, 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 like to, I like to know. I like to know. So get, get wisdom. So the first thing is you got to know more. You got to know more. The second thing is I'd say you got you to think more. You got to think more. You got to think differently because to, to, if, if you want to do more and be more and have more, 
I, I think if you want to go to next level living, how many have got some areas of your life that you want to see do better than they're doing right now? Right? Okay. So we all have another level that we want to go to. It starts with another level of thinking. If you can change the way you look at things, the way you think about things, the Bible talks about us renewing our minds, changing the way that we see things or think about things. He said in Proverbs 23, as a person thinketh, so will they be. As a person thinketh. Well, I never could see myself getting a house like that. Well, don't worry, you won't. I'd love to own my own business, but I'd, I'd, I'd never be able to own my business. You're absolutely right. Because whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. So you've got to change your level of, of thinking, which changes your level of expectation. Because whatever you expect with confidence, I mean, I don't really expect the rest of this year to be better. Well, it probably won't be. But what if you did expect that God could do something? I mean, what is there, seven more months left this year? Seven months. I mean, God created the entire world in seven days, and one of those he was resting on. Think what he could do in your life in the next seven months if you just started to believe. If you started to believe more and expect more and, 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 and declare more. And, and I mean, think what could happen. Think more. I mean, than you've ever thought before. Ideas have made people millions of dollars, just one idea. The billionaire Ross Perot said all it takes is one good idea to live like a king the rest of your life. Just one good idea. Remember that, that, that whole thing I said I invested in that, uh, from, from Peter J. Daniels, that $1,600? I started listening to it, and I got a lot of good ideas. And then I got this one really good idea. I ended up putting the idea together, I, and, and I sold the idea. Within about eight months, that one idea produced me over $300,000. It's a pretty good idea. Y'all seem a little upset about it. We're going to pray for jealousy in just a minute. I sense a lot of it in this section, but um, no, seriously, how many, how many would be happy if you had a $300,000 idea? Come on. How many would be happy if you just had like a $50,000 idea? How many just hope you have an idea before you die? Like, I hope I think of something. I never thought of nothing. So thinking, I mean, it's, it's, it's people's thinking that has produced scientific breakthroughs, medical cures, business opportunities, all that the help for humanity, all that comes because someone began to, to think. Psalms chapter 1 says, blessed is the man who walks and lives in the, and not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, nor stands inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down with the scornful, but his delight and desire in the laws of God, the principles of God. In his law, in his precepts, in the teachings of God, he habitually meditates, thinks on, ponders day and night what God's word says. That person is going to produce fruit, bring forth great fruit in its seasons, and its leaves do not fade or wither, and everything that they do will prosper and come to maturity. How many want your life to flourish, right? Think more. Think more of what God's Word says. The person who meditates day and night, whatever they do, that means all the time. I'm thinking, what does God's Word say? If he says to do it day and night, that means there must be principles in the Word of God to help me day and night, 24 hours a day. If I'm at home with my family, there's going to be principles that are going to help me be a better father, a better husband. If I'm, uh, if I'm at work, there's going to be principles that are going to help me negotiate or lead or whatever that is that I, I've got to do. So, so you are what you think about. And what you think in your heart, the Bible says you will become. And so I encourage you, if you want the rest of your year to be the best of your year, learn something different the rest of this year. Start getting wisdom. Invest in yourself. Buy, buy some books. If, if you're interested, and, and not everybody will be, but there's always, there's always three or four people that say, I want to learn and grow. You're like me. I'm like, I can't get enough. I can't get enough. We, we took, um, I took thousands of hours, and I studied great achievers. I found, I found what was the common qualities in their life. And, and I began to gather wisdom from them. And, and I put it all together, whether they're on the, 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 the baseball field or the battlefield or the business field or, or ministry field, whatever field they were good in, what made them great? 
And so I took those, I, I found the top 12 traits of the greats, and I wrote a book called 12 Traits of the Greats, and I developed a whole program. So you take a trade a week, and, you, and there, there's videos and workbooks, and I, I put the whole thing together, and it comes in, it usually comes in a big box, and, and uh, I think it's like $1,000 for the box. And, 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 and so we, we put that together, and it's helped a whole lot of people because they know something I don't know. They've been somewhere I, I hadn't been before, and so I, I wanted to know. Uh, I took uh, uh, my latest book was called Mindset Matters, because I just talked to you about thinking more. And I took it, both those programs, they come in big boxes, but we did something uh, recently where we took all, we took six of our top programs, six of, six of our top books, the one, 12 Traits of the Greats, which I, I'm talking about. I wish I could just go through all the different traits and how to develop them in, in our life. But in here, you could take those traits through this, uh, through this system. You get the book, you get the, uh, the e-book, so you can, if you like to read the book, you'll get the ebook. You'll get a workbook that goes with it. You'll get the audio book. If you, I can read the book to you. If you're, if you, if you don't like to read, I'll read the book to you. And you get 12 videos that go with it. So it's a whole program. The mindset matters. That book's in here. The ebook, all that stuff's in here. And then four of our other books. One on habits called Make That Break. That's in here. Uh, my best-selling book ever is called The Force of Favor on the favor of God. I think the first time I came, I taught on uh, on God's favor. And then, uh, and then as a coach my favorite thing to do is help people develop a plan. I mean, you want to make the rest of your year the best of your year. The Bible says, commit your plans to me and I will cause them to succeed. How many like God to be your business partner, your partner for whatever it is you're trying to achieve? And, and so uh, as a coach, I want to help people develop a plan to start a business, to, to uh, a franchise, to, to lose weight, to whatever it is that they want to do. Uh, first of the year, I said, I'm going to lose, I'm going to, I'm going to lose 35 pounds. And, 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 and I'm, I'm good because here we are, what, June? And I, I've only got 42 to go. <laughs> and, and so um, I can help you. Uh, no, so so how, would like, how many like it if I could come to your house for like 30 days, we'll sit down every morning, we'll put together, and we'll develop your plan to make the rest of your year the best year, to get you from where you are to where you want to be? Uh, I wrote a book. How many have ever made a mistake? Okay. If you've never made a mistake, you probably never made anything. Everybody's made mistakes. Uh, everyone's missed a, uh, a shot every, every now and then. I was, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of athletes and, and uh and especially in the NBA, and there's a, a player by the name of Kobe Bryant who's passed away now. But uh, Kobe and I were sitting at, at the Island Hotel in uh, Newport, California. He had just set the record for the most missed shots in the history of the NBA, missed more shots than anyone else in the history of the NBA. Now, seven days after he set that record, he passed up a guy named Michael Jordan for the most points scored during his career. So the same guy with the most missed shots, pass up the greatest player of all time. I said, how did you do it? He said, I just took another shot. How simple is that? But so many times we let the fear of failure or the fear of criticism keep us from trying again. He said, yeah, I missed some shots, but I just kept taking more shots. And finally, I, I, so sometimes you just got to get up. Don't let the fear of failure keep you from trying again. And so developing that plan, I love on the, on, so I wrote a book called Another Shot, which is in here. But on the back of that book, there's a great quote by Evander Holyfield, if you know, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm not dropping names, I want, I'm, the quote it makes sense if you know it's a boxer. So, and, and, I, and I did want you to know what the five-time heavyweight champion of the world said about my book. But um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not a name dropper. If anything I've learned from spending time with Oprah, it's that, um, it's that you should not drop names. But Evander Holyfield said, it's not getting knocked down that makes you lose the fight. It's not getting back up. So I, I love to help people drop a plan. And so in here, there's a 30 day plan. It's called the game plan where every morning I, I go through those 30 days. Anyway, it's a whole bunch of stuff. If you went to our website and bought them all individually, if you saw me at a corporate event, it's going to cost several thousand dollars for all those. And, and we, we made it for, for churches and make, make it simple, all downloadable. And you can get all six. There's, there's six of them. There. I didn't tell you about all of them, but it's like six books, audio books, workbooks, and 72 coaching videos, something like that. A whole bunch of stuff uh, for just like three nine. 97 or three, 350, 400, something like that. Anyway, there's, there's a few of them. We didn't bring them for everybody, but there's people like me that just want to grow. And so if you, if you want to grab one, there's a few of them just out the door on the right there uh, and uh, at the end of the hallway, and, and, and you can invest in you. The, the last one, the, la the third one I want to talk to you about. So the first one was what? What's, what was the first one? 
no more. Okay, good, good class, some of you. Some of you I'm concerned about. The second one was what? Think more. And then the last one I find, because I love to do this, because most of us do. How many like giving? How many like to give? Yeah, most of us do. Give more. Give more. I find the more that I give, not just my finances, but I, I give help. I, I love to help people. Someone called me yesterday. He's going, I need this and this. I said, hold on, let me make a couple calls. Made a couple calls, made a connection there, and I helped someone else. I gave my time. I gave my relationships. So I'm always looking for ways to help others. We're blessed to be a blessing. So I encourage you to look for ways to give more. Now, growing up in church, we learned about giving. You know, we always learned about it at church. You better give, you better give, you better give in the offering, you better give your tithe, you better give, or God will kill you. If you don't, remember Ananias and Sapphira? They didn't give. They lied about their giving. God killed them. He'll kill you too. We went to kids' church. They taught us songs when we were kids. God will take it out of your hide if you don't pay your tithe. You know, uh, we didn't. We didn't learn the joy of giving. Of course, I didn't go to a church like this that has such incredible vision, so many exciting things happening. And, 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 and of course, we realized that God created us in his image. So he created us to be like him. And God loved the world so much that he, he gave. He gave. He was a giver. So that's why most of us enjoy it. Most everybody in here lifted their hand. It always cracks me when people say, people don't like giving. They don't like to talk about giving. Like, it's so funny. No one likes to talk about it, but everybody likes to do it. I'm always looking for ways to give. Of course, I honor God with my tithe because the Bible tells me it's a principle that opens up the windows of heaven over my life. And who doesn't want the windows of heaven open over your life? Plus, it, it, we all want to live a God first life. So just the tithe, it just says, God, I'm a, I, I put you first. Not a, it's not myself first, not, not me take care of this and take care of that. And if I got some left over, I give it to you. No, I bring him his first because I, I honor the principle in his, in his word. And then I'm able to be generous and we have heart for the house and vision and so many great things happening that we get to be a part of. But I look for ways just in my everyday life to be a giver, whether it's a, a kind word, a smile. That's a, a gift. Anything you have that blesses someone else, anything you have that encourages someone else, I was sitting in, um, my son and I were at Taco Bell the other day. Anybody, anybody, y'all got Taco Bell here, right? Yeah, you want some good, authentic Mexican food. That's the place. But, uh, so my son and I went to Taco Bell, and, and uh, we got our food. We sat down, and the lady in the booth next to us, we overheard this lady in the booth next to us having a talk with her son. He was maybe 9 or 10 years old, and, and they were planning his birthday party. He had a birthday party coming up, and, and he had a list of 12 friends he wanted to bring to his birthday party. Here's my 12 friends. And his mom said, you can only bring 10 friends. He said, but mom, I got 12. She said, well, you can't bring all 12 because I can't afford enough pizza and stuff for all 12. I can only afford enough for 10. And I'm, I'm listening to the conversation, and, and, uh, and, and she explains to him that I can get this many pizzas, and there's this many slices per pizza, so if there's two slices per kid, and she's explained the whole thing. He's 10 years old, 9 years old. He don't understand the whole equation, the pizza equation. He just wants all of his friends to come to the party, and so he's getting upset with his mom, and then his mom gets upset because she's trying to explain to him. It's, it's, she doesn't have the money to do what he wants to do, and I'm sure as a mom, she wants him to be able to do it and, and, and have his friends, but she can, and she's all upset, and he's getting upset, and I'm sitting right next to him, and I realize it's just a money issue, and, and, and they just got a little problem and I thought I'm a Christian I'm a Christ follower here's someone with a problem and what could I do what would a good Christian do if they heard about someone with a need like this exactly I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray for them I'm gonna pray I hope it all works out you know isn't that what good Christians do it, it amazes me how often we pray about situations that God's already given us the ability to solve I don't need to pray for her. I don't need to pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you would give her wisdom to know more. Lord, if she cut those slices smaller, she could get more kids, more, more pieces out of it. Lord, I pray one of his friends would move before the party and one would be a vegan. I don't know. I'm just... I, all of a sudden, I remembered I had $100 in my pocket. Wait, I had, I had $100. When God blesses you, he's got a lot more than you in mind. He blesses you so that you can be a blessing. 
right? He blesses you so you can be a blessing. And so I just took the $100 bill out. I walked over the table and said, excuse me, I'm sorry. I wasn't eavesdropping on your conversation. I was just listening to it. I heard about the party, and, 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 and look, um, here's $100. Invite those other two friends. You guys have a, have a blessed birthday, and, and I just turned around and, and left, right? Because it wasn't about me. It wasn't about me. It wasn't like, hey, here's $100. Um, here's my card. I have a YouTube channel, daily videos. Make sure you watch those. It'll be encouragement to you. And, and, uh, and by the way, follow me on Instagram. Yeah, it wasn't about me, right? By the way, you should totally follow me on Instagram if you, if you don't. At Dr. Dave Martin. But I just left. I'm sure she, she's, she's watched. I left. She probably got home. She's like, you're not going to believe this. We were sitting there in Taco Bell, and this big, bald angel came with $100, exactly what we needed. But all I'm saying is look for ways that you can be a blessing. You want to make the rest of your year the best of your year. God says whatever you give, he brings back to you. And when it comes back, it always comes back more, right? I mean, think about how much he loved you. John 3, 16, for he loved you so much that he gave. He gave his very best. Some of you received that gift earlier today, just earlier in the service. You said, I thank you for the, the gift. He loved you so much he gave his very best for you. He wants the rest. Say that with me. Say the rest of my year. Come on, everybody say it with me. Say the rest of my year will be the best of my year. It starts with a decision. What are you expecting the rest of this year? What do you want to see God do the rest of this year? No more. Get into the word of God. Get into principles. Get into understanding. Get some information that will help make tomorrow different than today. Because if you go into tomorrow with the same information, I got to learn something today. It's the difference between where I am and where I want to be. Think more. Work on your thinking. Work on your mindset. As a person thinketh, so will they be. Bible didn't say be transformed by removing your mind. It said by renewing your mind. And so it's something that you got to work on every day. And then look for opportunities, of course, to honor God with your tithe and offering and your giving here at church in the house of God. We know that's the so important principle that, that opens up the windows of heaven over our life. But look for ways that you can help others, bless others, love on others, smile on others, give to others, be generous. I'm telling you, when you live with an open hand. It leaves you wide open for God to pour out blessings on you. How many like for God to bless you more? How do you do that? By being a greater blessing.